This is the goal of the next three videos that will cover everything there is to know about getting started with Fluent Material Creator. First important point about the rendering engine to use. For my part, I strongly advise to use Cycles instead of EV at least during the design phase. Why? Simply because EV is a video game-like rendering engine. It allows real-time rendering, yes, but at the cost of loading time. Now, when you are in the design phase, you are going to modify a lot the content of your material. And each time you add or delete uh, a node, EV will compile, uh, will compile the material again again and again uh, and it's particularly particularly slow operation on the opposite cycles is longer for a smooth rendering but applies instantly the changes made in the material last point ev does not allow as many things in the creation of material as cycles in short i strongly advise you to design your materials with cycles and to use EV only for the final use. My object is well selected and I create a new material. I deactivate all the display options in order to have a perfectly clear viewport and I switch to rendering. Select the principal BSDF, press the F key to display the menu and add a new layer. The new node is then automatically connected to the previous one. Let's start by setting the base color. Okay, we will start by adding detail to the roofness. And we are going to approach one extremely important element of the add-on philosophy. The add-on offers you a library of effects and these effects can be stacked one behind the other. Let's add, for example, a first smudge effect. To see what a node does in Blender, use the shortcut Ctrl Shift left click. It is in fact the Node Wrangler add-on that we activated uh, in the previous video that allows us to do this. And by doing this again, you will be able to switch from one output to another so that you can review them all. This is something that you have um, all the time, so keep that in mind. I will go to the roofness output and set the node like this. Now just connect the roofness output to the roofness input of the layer. So I've put a, uh, I've put a first effect there and now we are going to start stacking. I would like to add a dried water droplet effect. Um, I keep my node smudge selected and I, I will look for my next effect in the, uh, in the imperfections. I select liquid stains too. The node appears just next to the previous one. To add this effect to the previous one, I simply connect the roofness output to the roofness input. Once again, in order to see what the node outputs, I use Control shift left click I set the node like this and I observe the result directly with Control shift left click on the layer. We just saw something really important this idea of stacking effect and we are going to reuse that idea 
uh, for the details of the normal map. Back in the imperfection section and select scratches uh, 27. As you can imagine, we connect the normal output to the normal input. To see what I'm doing, I display the mask output. This is the best way to see how the scratches uh, are spread out. We set this node again and observe the result on the BSDF output of the layer. The scratches are clearly visible and it's time to add a new effect. What I want here are impacts. Still in imperfections, uh, I will look for the node called Dented. As you may have guessed, uh, we now connect the normal output to the normal input of the previous node. Here again, I use the mask output to see what I'm doing and set up my node correctly. A little tip, a little tip, you can speed up the rendering uh, of your preview by limiting the rendering area. To do this, press Ctrl B and draw the rectangle you want. I'm refining my material a bit. To return a, a complete rendering, you will use the Ctrl Alt B case. Okay, Ctrl Alt B to come back to full render. For this last touch, we will make the color less uniform on the surface. In the grunge section, I select the very first item. Once again, I connect what uh, I check what is produced by the node by looking at the output with the shortcut Control Shift Left Click. Here, nothing special to change. I connect the result output directly to the map color variation input of the layer. In my example, I modify value, saturation, and hue, but you could also use the, the overlay slider, why not? That's it for this part. I will join you in the next video in which we will add weird effects on the edges. See you shortly.